It's the first day of November, 1976. Who's it there? Look, what's this? Ah, look. This is 1976. Where's it taken? Here. Yeah. Oh, right, okay, very good. Bradley Austin, 14 months old, is desperately ill. Never mind. Here comes. This is the story of the next 10 days in his young life. Let's give a shot. Looks like it is to me. A little tinge on his lips indicates a malformed heart. In fact, it's a wonder that it's alive. Not enough to get into the... He was on the brink of death. Lungs. As a three-day-old, he was rushed into the paediatric unit at London's Brompton Hospital. A catheter, a long, thin tube, was inserted into a vein in the groin and guided upwards. It needed patience and dexterity, but eventually the tube entered the heart itself. Then a radio-opaque dye was pumped through it and the blood flow could be seen. It indicated that Bradley's heart was now formed. For survival, a temporary operation was imperative. I guess you still do this. Yes, but another, the, another big change is we, had, and we can get the diagnosis usually by echo without having to do this. Oh. Fully blown up, it was jerked backwards to tear a hole in the inner wall. This hole allows Bradley's blood to mingle just sufficiently to keep him alive. Now, in the case of Bradley Austin, as we've explained to you uh, previously, he has transposition of the great arteries where the main artery to the body and the main artery to the lungs come off the wrong pumping chambers. Elliot Scheinborn was the paediatrician in charge of the earlier operation. Forty months later, on day two, Side second friends. of November, like 1996, <laughs> he explained the situation. I must tease him next time I see him. Transposition means that Bradley's blood, the blood with the impurities, is he working the chest or... No, 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 he's retired now. We'll see him from time to time. ...through the heart and recirculates around his body. Extraordinarily, Bradley's heart is connected the wrong way round. His red blood, containing oxygen, never reaches the body. It's just pumped back to the lungs. It never feeds Bradley's brain or limbs. So they make a hole Only here. that temporary so mixes. measure, the gash made in the wall, allowed Bradley to survive to undergo further complex surgery. And this operation, which is called a mustard operation, a piece of material must be inserted into the heart to form two Very distinct clever operations. One channels Bradley's blue blood to the lungs to be oxygenated. It's a very clever operation. It's invented by a Canadian called William Mustard. At the same time, That's why it's called mustard operation. Ah. And what it does is divert the blood in the atrium. There is a risk. And uh, they developed this operation at Brompton to a very high standard and came down to about a 1 or 2% risk. But the problem is you still have the right ventricle pumping blood into the systemic circulation for high pressure and you have the left ventricle pumping into the low pressure circulation for the lungs, the pulmonary circulation. And these ventricles are designed to do exactly the opposite. The left ventricle is designed to pump into the high pressure circuit. So over time, they develop problems. And by the time they get become teenagers, late teenagers, they have rhythm disorders and so on. So in 1980, a new operation was developed in which the arteries were swapped over. The artery in the pulmonary artery called the arterial switch operation. First pioneered in Brazil, but the person who really led it was Magdi Yacoub at the Heart Hospital and subsequently here. And to begin with, that had a higher mortality rate, but now it is the operation of choice. And the mustard operation is very rarely done, except in some very unusual circumstances. But at this time, it was a life-saving thing for these people, but it had late problems. By taking this record and comparing it with a very clever idea of moving the blood and the venous stand to save future lives. And can the problem of the longer life be rectified? Look, it's the commonest cause of heart failure at the age of one month. Transposition. Oh, look at this. I have Bob Anderson. 
Ah. Master transposition, and you can see that there's. This heart is formed in the same way as Bradley's. Until recently, it's been rare for children with these hearts to survive. But those earlier fatalities now help the back to understand the hearts, particularly the positioning of the wiring system. Good eyebrows, huh? Okay. Something about to put about this as well. Each heart with wax and then slice it into incredibly thin slivers. Dyes are imparted to show up the different types of tissue in the heart. This is routine histology, but it's... He's building a blueprint of a malformed heart and tracing Bob it to is one of the leading the world experts the on the heart. Tissues, which the surgeon must he avoid. and three or four other people redesigned the, 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 the whole classification of congenital heart disease to make it easier for surgeons to understand what Under has to be done. It was a major contribution. Can be seen, mm. But he searches out the special circular So this hospital has been at the centre of some signals. very major developments. I think from the surgical point of view, the reclassification the of congenital heart children. disease emphasizing the problem of the abnormal connections which is the key point from a really made a life a lot more straightforward for the surgeon each strand of wiring that Anderson has identified it's slow painstaking work but for Bradley his chances in the operating theater could well depend upon isolating those roots in his type of heart each section of every known type of malformed heart has been built up in this way it's a fantastic amount of work Went into yes. This. So I guess you replace this with imaging now. Mm, well, yes, of course. Now you can do it with a model which the surgeon um, could examine. Virtual imaging. A model on which the blue line, indicating every twist and turn of the heart's electrical wiring, is clear. What visible. you don't want to do is damage that wiring when you're operating on the patient. Otherwise, you may have to put a pacemaker. And you put a pacemaker in a one-year-old child. That's a very serious thing to do. Commits the child for life to pacemaker. Mm. The surgery has batteries changed. Problems with the wires and just it introduces a whole new chapter of complications. So this is a way of cooling the patient down to 32 degrees, and then. We the put the patient on bypass, by it shortens the bypass time. Because small children are very intolerant to cardiopulmonary bypass. You need to keep the bypass time short. As short as you can. The body is cool, less than an hour if you can, or less than an hour and a half. And the process of making the heart inoperative How long would you normally begin? take for an adult? Right well, as this, the heart must these operations normally static. take about, nowadays, about an hour, a something like that, an hour and a half. But in the early days, this Bradley's could be three or four hours to mm. people blood pressure reaches and understood what to do. Normal temperature. And the heart's pumping this is crystal. reduced. Okay. That's Chris Lincoln speaking. Uh, give me 25. Now that tiny, malformed heart Can you is open and oh, yes. explored. Who is it, sorry? Lincoln, Mr. Lincoln. First Mr. J.C.R. Lincoln. The wiring system. He and Bob Anderson and Elliot Shamborn, they were a team all working together. Like the model of the it was very, very good. All over in the south. The surgeon is pre-warned. Well, it's dedicated surgery. He spent, I mean, for 15 years, Chris Lincoln, it's the only pediatric surgeon here. There was no time off. Oh. Occasionally on Sunday, you go and see his mother in Kent, but otherwise he's here the whole time. That's, that's the kind of dedication. Nowadays, people, no one would understand that. 10 degrees. And before putting in Bradley's new plumbing system, the blood flow through the heart must be stopped completely. The surgeon applies a clamp. Ruler to me. The inside of the heart is now probed and measured. Around to centimeters. With a common marker now, if you very much. Each dimension must be accurately ascertained. Two centimeters. The outline of a new plumbing system for a 14-month-old boy is slowly, painstakingly planned out onto the material. The kind of shape he's blocking out has been perfected over five years. Its development has increased enormously at the success rate of the operation. Mm. If you've got to get this, this baffle that redirects the blood, it's it very precise how you make that because you can easily block things off. It's very difficult. It took a long time to learn to do it, but he became one of the world experts at this operation, Lincoln. And then as it happens in surgery, the operation looks like a pair of trousers, you see. It's very intricate. But it has to be exactly the right shape for the child. 
otherwise you get obstruction because you're trying to re-divert them. Remember that the heart is very small, about the size of two walnuts. You're operating on. This is a very small child and then you've got, and you're redirecting the blood. And the child grows, and it grows, things may twist and turn, and the tube you set up may obstruct, so there's a lot to think about. So what they're doing at the moment, they're, they're sticking... The yes, they're, they're, they're redirecting the flow on the atrial side of the heart. Now they put it together again, they're just about to come detach the heart from the heart line machine and get the heart to beat on its own. So there's the heart beating the ECG. Primitive um, monitoring by comparison to today. Day four is drawing to a close. It's the start of another highly dangerous period. The nursing team now takes charge. For the next 24 hours... When did the nurses out for change, please, Max? Sorry, when did they... Be quite quite I think I changed in the 80s. Alert the whole team. But for two people, there's a particular tension at this time. I'm trying to think who that is. I'm trying to think who that is. It's pretty terrifying it's stuff for a mother. Absolutely, I was just looking at it thinking, <gasps> you know, it's all out of your control. You don't really understand what's going on. They're always kept fully informed, but allowed access to their child whenever possible. The unit feels that's important, but now they must just wait. We have found a wonderful article on 1968, actually, about how, how the Brompton welcomed parents on the wards. Oh, yes, yes. To really sort of, you know, have a yeah. child with the wards be terrified. Well, Lincoln, Mr. Lincoln, the surgeon, and Elliot Shamborn, these two really built up the children's unit that here night, together. Bradley is watched over by another team in the unit. They're the electronic experts. Bradley is slowly emerging from a state of non-living, and a whole battery of monitors is used to make sure that the emergence proceeds calmly. One of the most sensitive checks is picking up the minute variations in carbon dioxide levels in Bradley's breathing. The slightest variation, and the alarm will be raised. And you see intubation in children, you do it through the nose, because that's the only way you can stabilise it. The distance between the top of the airway and the division into the tube bronchi is very small. So you've got to keep that tube in that area, because if it shifts, it either will fall out of the airway or go down one line, and so the other one isn't ventilated. So it's very, all these, there are lots of little critical things like that. Which you've got to get right. There's no, and there's no second chance for these children. If, it, if the child loses, loses oxygen for a minute or two, that's it. Becomes a neurological mess. Okay, very Amazing. good. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so, so much. Okay. Is that all you wanted to do? Right? Would I want to ask one more question <laughs> yes, about gratitude? Okay. Any patients express gratitude to you? Oh yeah, so patients are ways. very grateful. Well, they're grateful to the whole team, really. Yes, you have. Um, received very nice letters and cards from time to time, yes. Last Christmas I had a letter from a patient who is now 22 years after her heart transplant, which is amazing.